Hi, I'm Jason with Tormach. Today we're going to talk about different ways to put in holes without using a drill bit. So to do this, we're going to use our conversational routines that are built in the Pathpilot. So we'll jump to the conversational tab. The first one we're going to look at is a pocketing routine. So you can see we have options here to do rectangular pocketing and circular pocketing. For putting in a hole, we're going to want to choose circular pocket. And then you'll notice here that we list X from drill table and Y from drill table. What that means is we're giving you the ability to put in more than one hole at a time. So we use the table and the drill chart to define those locations. So if we want to put in a couple hole locations here, we can just enter our value. So we'll just go ahead and enter in a couple values. So we'll go one inch in X, we'll go minus one inch in Y, and we'll do a second hole at um, 1.5 inches in X and continue at one inch in Y. And then we just jump back over to our pocketing tab to enter the rest of our information. So we need to choose our pocket diameter. We're going to go ahead and machine a 7 16 diameter hole. So we can use Pathpilot here to do the math for us. So we can just enter 7 16 press enter, it'll put it in decimal format for us. It jumps us down to our Z start position. We want to start at the top of our part, which is Z0. And as we press enter when we work through these forms, it air checks as we go. So if we typo something, you know, if I put an inappropriate value in, it'll light it up red, showing that we, we have a problem with it. So for our ZN position, we're going to go ahead and go all the way down to minus a half inch. And then our depth of cut. What the pocket routine will do, depending on the diameter of your tool and the hole diameter, it's either going to do real small plunge moves almost like a peck drilling cycle to get the part or get the tool down to your depth or it'll do a helical entry move. So we'll go ahead and enter in um, a quarter inch depth of cut for this since we're using a quarter inch end mill. And our step over, I'm going to take a pretty small step over on this. I like to do anywhere from 10 to 30 percent. Um, just for the sake of showing it, we'll go ahead and do 10 percent. Just to show you again that we can do the math right in the window. We'll just say 0.25 times 0.1 give us our math. And so it gives you that ability to do the, the math pretty easily. Um, from here, we need to go ahead, name our tool path. Um, we're just going to go ahead and call this test holes. We're going to use G54 as our work offset. So we'll just go ahead and press 54, hit enter. Our tool number is 10. Um, it's a quarter inch diameter cutter. So we'll go ahead and run it. You know, 6,000 RPM is a good number. Um, our feed rate. You know, for something like this, I'd like to run, you know, two to three thou per tooth. So if we go ahead and do the math on that, um, it's a two fluid end mill, so we're at four thou per revolution times 6,000 RPM. You know, give us our 24 inch a minute feed rate. And I'm going to go ahead and um, just use half of that for our Z feed rate. And then our clearance plane will leave at 100 thousandths. So from here, we can go ahead and hit post. We can create a folder to store our project in so we can find it easily later. So let's call this one JSON. Let's call it test holes, and we'll save that file. And you can see on the toolpath display, we get a nice spiral toolpath. If we go to an isometric view by right clicking on this, you can see with this tool diameter and this hole diameter that Pathpilot went ahead and did a small pecking routine to get the tool down into the part. So if we look through the code here, you can see we have a Z plunge entry motion here, and it's just a peck drilling cycle. So it's just taking small peck moves to get the tool down to our depth of cut. So from here, we have our program. We can go ahead. We already have our work offset and tool and everything defined and in the machine. So we can go ahead and run our program and prove it out. So I'm going to go back to the top view so I can see where my part is relative to my machine coordinates. Anytime I run a program, you're always going to notice I turn my feed rate down to zero and my max velocity down to zero. And then I press cycle start. This just keeps control over the machine because when we click and we hold the mouse button down, on the max velocity bar, we have control over this until we let go of the mouse button. So as we approach the part here, we'll slow down as we get close. I'm going to check my distance to go. We've got 86 thousandths before we engage a feed move. So I'm going to go ahead and let it continue. 
So now since we've approached the part with our feed rate and max velocity turned down, the program's waiting for me to turn up the feed rate override so that it can start cutting. So then I'll grab the feed slider and I'll just start to engage it and let it start to peck. It's a nice relaxed way of approaching the part. So again, that was creating two holes without drilling in the path pilot conversation routines using the pocketing toolpath. An alternative approach to that, which is probably my preferred approach just because I've used it for so long, is to actually use a thread milling cycle. So we'll go ahead and I'll show you guys how to do that as well. So we'll jump back to our conversational screen. So instead of using a pocketing routine, I like to use a thread milling cycle. I like that helical entry pass and when you're using a, a tool that's less than or greater than half the diameter you're of your hole, you can just put it all in one pass anyways. So what I like to do is just use a thread milling cycle. So it's a little bit of an off-road approach, a little unconventional, but I've always found that it works really well for me. Um, so what I'll go ahead and do is this function is real similar to the pocket routine. It still uses the position from the X and Y. So we'll go ahead and just update these quick. We'll say we're going to start at two inches and we'll go to two and a half inches this time. We'll jump back to our thread milling page and what I'll do is my major diameter is going to be the same finish diameter that I want to use. So we'll use a 4375 or 716. My minor diameter, it's not as important when you're using the thread milling in this application. So I always just pick something a little smaller than my major just to, um, I want to do it in a single pass. You can see it predefines our depth of cut. What's going to control our depth of cut on this tool path is the pitch. So it's going to be how far down in Z does it move every revolution. I'm going to go ahead and set it at about 20 thousandths of an inch for this example. Um, that ends up being the 50 threads per inch. Our Z start position again will be zero and our end position will go down to the same half inch. And feed rates and stuff on this, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn the feed rate up from here. I'm going to run it at about 50 inches a minute for this example. We'll just go ahead and name this um, test holes 2. And then all of our other stuff we're going to keep the same. We'll keep the same spindle speed and everything. We'll go ahead and post this program. So you can see when I looked at my toolpath here, it's kind of a nice air checking. My circles looked a little too large, so I went back and checking my conversational to see what, I, what mistake I made. I had internal and external option. I have external this chosen here, so I want to go ahead and choose internal thread. So I'll go ahead and just redo this quick. So our major diameter was 4375. Our minor, we did it 400 thou. Number of passes, we're going to do a single pass. And our pitch was 20 thousandths of an inch. Starting position was zero, and we were going down to a minus 500 thousandths. So just another, again, another quick little example, um, impromptu example of how the, the tool path display can be beneficial for you. So we'll go ahead and repost this again, and we'll call it test holes two again. Hit post a file, we'll go ahead and overwrite the one that we have. And that looks a little more reasonable. So I'll go ahead and run this in the machine and show you guys how it works. All right, so now we're ready to prove this program out. So I'm going to do the same way I did last time. I'm going to turn my feed rate and my max velocity down. And go ahead and start the program. And let it walk over to the part nice and slow.
you can see now it's just doing a helical entry, about 20 thousandths per revolution or per pass on the Z-depth and it's just uh, machining the hole out for us. And you can hear as it cuts, it's got a real nice sound. The machine's not really working very hard to put this feature in. So we'll swipe the part off quick. You can see that we have two more holes in our blank here. So, we've, so what we've covered so far is how to make a hole with a pocketing routine and one with a thread milling routine. Um, the last thing I'd like to show you guys today is another way of using the pocketing routine. So if we look in here again, we can see there's a little note. It says step over equals zero, cut only pocket perimeter. So what that's given us the ability to do is to take a single pass around the outside of the part. So for example, if we wanted to use that thread milling cycle as our roughing and we wanted to come back and say we needed to make that hole a couple thousands bigger to fit a dollop into or you know, fit a component in, we could come back and take a single pass around that, around that hole. So we'll go ahead and do that here. We'll set our step over at zero. We'll increase our pocket diameter to, we'll just say 440 thousandths. Take a real light finish pass on there. And we're still using the hole positions from the drill table, so it'll go ahead and recut, um, recut those two holes we just created. And instead of doing a, two passes at a quarter inch, I'm gonna go ahead and tell it our depth of cut is at a half inch. We're gonna take just a real light finish pass at full depth. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my feed rate down to that two thousandths per flute again. So we'll go back down to that 24 inches a minute. So we'll go ahead and call this test holes finish pass, or just finish. We'll post this program. And we'll come in and we'll just take a quick finish pass just to clean that hole up a little bit larger. All right, so we'll go ahead and prove out this program. So we're gonna hit cycle start. Take a quick pass right around the outside of the hole. There's no chips on it. You never know with that thing until you're done. Was it, was it awesome? I tried to like accelerate it. So I hope you guys find this quick video beneficial on a few different ways to make holes without using a drill bit. Um, feel free to try these out, test them, see what works for your application. So thanks for watching. Feel free to check out our latest videos here and please subscribe to our YouTube channel here.